So Wendell Ford has died. He was a senator for Kentucky for a long time. He says uh, every little town in Kentucky has an airport. He said in the interview, if you got an airport, you got an ec opportunity for economic development. Mr. Ford is politically to the right of center in his party. In his 24 years in the Senate, the liberal group Americans for Democratic Action calculated he voted along liberal lines 56% of the time. And while he could be sharply partisan in his public speaking, he could also work the back rooms making deals with Republicans, a tradition that had become harder to sustain, he said, as the Senate embraced transparency with open meetings and televised coverage. In the old days, he said you could close the doors and work everything out. Everybody was happy, even the constituents. So he's uh, he represents you know an old archaic past. This is how deals get made behind closed doors. Uh, leaders make you know that's uh, that's the type of bullshit that we don't believe in. We don't trust in that because we're supposed to. The NSA is spying on us, um, but they have no transparency with them. So they get privacy, but we do not. It's totally backwards. It's absolutely upside down. Um, the uh, shaking hands, maybe that could get deals worked out, but what the fuck are they saying? Let's s fuck over the American people and help some corporation out. Hey, I know a businessman, and he wants to do this project. So, no transparency. Put it all out in front of people so that way people know exactly what is, you know, what's what's legit and what's not legit, and um, and go from there. That's the only way to do it, really. Um, after retiring from the Senate, Mr. Ford was a consultant with the Washington lobbying firm Dick Stein Shapiro. His major post-Senate enterprise, however, was the Wendell H. Ford Government Education Center at the Owensboro Museum of Science and History in Owensboro, the Ohio River City where he was born. Um, so, you know, Wendell Ford, he's been alive for 20, or been a senator for 24 years. I didn't even know he was still alive. I know I didn't know shit about him. I knew of him. People mentioned his name here and there. Um, but he never had any impact in my life. Uh, I remember one thing about him, though, it was, you know, the center of right thing, which is disappointing. And then also, he's, um, he would defend bourbon and tobacco and, um, I guess guns or something. I don't know, but it, but it was like sort of things that were hard to defend as years went on by. But I'm glad he did, you know, I'm glad he did those things. They, we should have a right to, you know, our own bodies in the Second Amendment. Is, I, I agree with all the things that he was actually standing up for. But, you know, him talking about backdoor deals, him talking about, you know, uh, working with Republicans, they only give a shit about one thing. So, you know, he's helping the wealthy bankers and the corporations. So it's disappointing, but um, expected. You know, it's not. I don't know if he, he's, he hasn't been a senator for a while. I think he was the last Democratic senator. So the we have Republican senators now. So this is a era foregone, a legacy, you know, a legend has died. Kentucky Power told to refund thirteen million dollars to Eastern Kentucky rate payers. The Kentucky Public Service Commission has ordered Kentucky Power to refund about thirteen million dollars in overcharges to customers. The PSC also barred the electricity provided from collective forty one million in additional fuel costs that were uh, to be taken in through May. The refund will be in form of credits on future bills. That's nice. You know, they're fucking robbing. You know, this is a coal, King Coal Corporation's fucking over to the taxpayers or the rate payers. And, um, you know, a statement from Attorney General Jack Conway's office said the average residential customer would save about $155 over a 17-month period. $155. That's a nice chunk of change. So, you know, Kentucky Power fucked over, what, about 200,000 people. In about 20 different counties. It's pretty fucked up, Kentucky Power. So the Kentucky Public Service Commission looks strong. Jack Conway looks strong. And it's bullshit that, you know, the coal companies are fucking taxpayers over the right, their own customers. They're fucking over their own customers. And so, again, the Public Service Commission of Kentucky, the Kentucky Public Service Commission, has prohibited Kentucky Power Company from charging those customers about $54 million in fuel costs deemed to be unreasonable by the PSC. In an order issued, the PSC directed Kentucky Power to refund through a credit on future bills $13 million in fuel costs that it collected during the first four months of last year. Kentucky Power must also either refund or forego collection of an estimated $41 million in additional fuel cost that was to be collected through the end of May 2015. The order has also 
Uh, criticized Kentucky Power for providing incomplete misleading information to the PSC during an earlier case involving the utilities purchase from a sister company of a 50% share in the Mitchell Power Plant in West Virginia to replace the Big Sandy Number no. 2 generating unit in Lawrence County. The PSC in October 2013 approved the purchase. So, I don't know. They're fucking lying. And it's a bullshit fuck Kentucky Power Company. Kentucky Power, you need to be giving us pretty cheap fucking rates. This is coal country. We we want like five cents per kilowatt hour. Fuck this ten cent shit. We want five cents per kilowatt hour. Um. So again, thirteen point two million dollars. What they have to refund. Um. They're collecting forty one million in additional fuel cost, according to Jack Conway's office. So Jack Conway can make some news, right? As soon as he says, "Hey, everybody, look at this." Then everybody's looking. So, um, the only person in the race uh, for Kentucky's governor that's in favor of legalization of marijuana, even though he's never spoken about it, I haven't seen, I have not been able to. He's a Green Party guy. He endorsed Gatewood. Um, he, all indications says that you know Jeff Young is in favor of marijuana, and um, and none of the other candidates are. But he's not even making that an issue. Energy policy, maybe you could tie it in with that in class warfare but he's got energy policy fuck the fracking you know racism fuck voter suppression abortion he's pro planned parenthood and class warfare he's in favor of 99 percent of the kentuckians so you know uh jeff young is the only person to vote for if you have any sense whatsoever unless you're completely you know backwards unless you're a fucking idiot if you're just a stupid stupid ass fucking idiot and then you shouldn't, um, you probably shouldn't even be voting. You probably shouldn't even really go out of your house. You probably should just stay inside so you don't hurt anybody. Stupid ass fucking idiots. Actually, I think that's in Kentucky law that if you're an idiot, you're not allowed to fucking vote. So, you know, if you're a fucking idiot, don't go fucking vote. You, you are right. If, you have, if you've been an idiot and you have not been voting, you were right in not doing so. So... And, um, and probably, you know, some of these assholes need some, you know, mental health. Uh, that's, that's how we're going to get, uh, Kentucky to, to the top is by, you know, actually making sure the Chris Kyle's of the world are taken care of, you know, live in a state where the Confederate flag is waved right next to the American flag without any type of internal hypocrisy, even though those two nations were at war with one another, one's a treasonous flag and the other one is not um, there's lots of issues actually with um, Kentucky that we're faced with but we could do capitalism and we could do socialism better so we can make sure our people are taken care of and we can uh, increase the GDP by making more stuff the more stuff we make the more money we make let's just fucking do it you know um, instead of just making economics a fucking elitist thing to know and just talk you know plainly to people and just say this is the economic situation we're faced with Here's where we need to go. This is what the economists are saying that we need to do something, you know, more exports, more GDP, making more stuff. The more stuff you make, the better the economy will be, the more stuff you have to sell. And so, you know, it's kind of simplistic, but that's how they look at it. You know, it's all about the GDP. So um, we can take care of the Chris Kyles. We can take care of the mothers. We can take care of education and uh, health care and, um, and and have a GMI, a guaranteed minimum income. Everybody should have 10000 bucks. If everybody had 10000 bucks, the poverty is cured. And, um, and you know, there's, uh, there's just multiple billion dollar ideas that I have that you can do to generate revenue. Since the government, you know, taxing is theft. And what the government could do is establish businesses and actually sell things and make money and all the profits and proceeds goes to the taxpayers. And then with those profits and proceeds, they can, you know, make more, um, have more services for people. So we would be doing capitalism and we would be doing socialism better. We have a mixed system already as it is. And so we just need to be honest with ourselves and say that, you know, the uh, Social Security is a good thing. It keeps people from slipping down the drain. Um, a lot of people think they paid into it. It doesn't exactly work that way, but they did pay the elder people that was above them. And so that's the way it works is that the young pay the old. And then when we're old, the young are going to pay our way. And so we're just, you know, helping the generation before us, the greatest generation, right? Probably one of the most entitled generations out here. And, um, you know, that's welfare. So if uh, you're against all welfare, you know, the Republicans, Rand Paul's already attacked a lot of, you know, 
He said half of everybody on welfare is gaming the system because they got anxiety or back pain. Half of them? I mean, that's a lot of fucking people, Rand. Um, but again, you know, he used uh, uh, Kentucky as a guinea pig and was able to bullshit his way into office. And so, you know, lessons learned. But um, there's only one candidate that actually wants to stand up for 99% of all Kentuckians. There's only one candidate that wants to bring racism and class war and abortion and energy policy as issues in order to speak about, and that's Jeff Young. And so Jeff Young should be um, our next governor um, of Kentucky. I mean, he's a badass. So uh, if you want Kentucky to be rich, if you want Kentucky to shine, if you want to see Kentucky go greener, uh, I, I love the green trees, the green grass, the green shrubbery, but we can become greener and we can get greener uh, uh, all, you know, up in the whole thing, the whole greener, greener, greener and uh, rich, rich, rich. If you want uh, Kentucky to make some money, if you want Kentucky to be richer, then you would be, um, uh, you would vote for Jeff Young. If you want Kentucky to be poor, well, you know, go, there's plenty of fucking Republicans running. And, um, even I think there's a Republican in the Democratic race too. He won't even fucking debate. Jack Conway, he's, um, you know, he's totally behind the times. He does not understand Kentucky. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get us. And that's, that's a damn shame. That's a damn shame.